Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this Web Security Academy lab, I'll show you how to perform a cross-site WebSocket hijacking attack to exfiltrate our victim's chat history and gain access to their account. The official solution to the lab requires Burp Professional Edition because it's using Burp Collaborator, but I'll show you how to solve the lab with just the Burp Community Edition. Let's get into it. So let's go to the application and go to live chat. I was already chatting to the bot quite a bit before, the interesting thing here, the interesting behavior is that if we refresh the page or as we just visited it, we were presented with our entire chat history, even though we're not logged in. So this means that the WebSocket has a concept of our session. So if we go to developer console and go to cookie editor, if you don't have the cookie editor extension, I'll link to it in the description, but we can see that there's a session cookie being set. That's how the WebSocket knows about our session. But more importantly, we see that the same site attribute of the session cookie is set to none, which means that the session cookie will be sent along in cross-site requests. So let me close this. And now let's go to Burp. In Burp, let's go to WebSockets. And I'm gonna clear the entire history here. So we have a clean history. I'm gonna go back to the application and refresh the page. And now here we can see in the history, it's a clean history, we can see one message to the server, which is a ready message that we send. And then the server replies with our entire chat history. That's quite interesting. We can confirm this if we send this ready message request to repeater. When we go to repeater, we have the ready message here and we send it. We can see clearly that we send the ready message and then the server replies with our entire chat history. Now let's go to proxy and HTTP history. If we go to the get slash chat endpoint here, we can see that this endpoint isn't using any CSRF protection because there are no unpredictable tokens being set. So we know about three important factors now. We know that the same site attribute of the session cookie is set to none, which means it will be sent along in cross-site requests. We know that the chat WebSocket endpoint is vulnerable to cross-site request forgery because it doesn't use any unpredictable tokens. And we know that when we send a ready message to the WebSocket, the WebSocket replies with the entire chat history. What we want to do is we want to create an exploit page that contains a JavaScript payload, where the JavaScript will open a WebSocket with the chat endpoint, send a ready message to the WebSocket, after which the server will reply with the entire chat history in separate messages. And for each message we receive, we want to send that message to ourselves. So if we send the link to this exploit page uh, through something like phishing to our victim and our victim clicks the link and visits our page. After loading the page, the victim will open a connection with the WebSocket. The session cookie will be sent along because the same site attribute of the session cookie is set to none. Then the victim will send a ready message to the WebSocket after which the WebSocket replies with the entire chat history. And then we send that chat history, so every message in the history to an endpoint, for example, a web server that we control. In this example, we're going to send it to our exploit endpoint in the form of get requests. Let's start crafting our payload. So we want to start by creating a new WebSocket. It's a secure WebSocket. That's what our lab is using. We want to open a WebSocket with our lab. So let's copy the host header here and paste that in. And we want to go to the chat endpoint. I'll save this file for now. Then when we've opened, so this is an event, when we've opened the WebSocket, we want to run a new function. And in that function, we want to send the message to the WebSocket. We want to send the ready message, uh, after which the WebSocket will reply with the entire chat history, which is another event. It will reply with the chat history in separate messages, so one for each line in the chat history. Uh, so let's create a new function. This time we add an argument event because we're receiving back information from the uh, WebSocket server. And then when we receive a message, we actually want to take that message and use the JavaScript fetch API to do a get request to the endpoint we control and add the uh, message we receive as our payload. Let's go to the lab, go to the exploit server. So the URL we want to use is this one here. Copy this, paste that in. I'm going to add a query parameter message and then we are going to append the message that we've received from the WebSocket containing our chat history. So we base64 encode that and then we say event.data which will include uh, the message. Let's save this file and now let's copy this and let's upload it to our exploit server. So let's go to our exploit server. Let's 
replace the text here. I'm gonna add and close JavaScript tags and then paste our payload in between. I'm gonna store this and then we're going to deliver our exploit to our victim. And then we're going to wait a few seconds for our victim in the background for the lab to uh, visit our exploit page here and then do the get request to upload the um, chat messages. That should be enough time. So let's go to access log, go all the way to the bottom. And then at the end here, we can see there was a 10 address that visited our exploit page. And then we can see several get requests to our exploit endpoint with a uh, query parameter message and then the base64 encoded log messages. So let's copy these lines here containing the chat messages. I'm going to go to VI, doesn't matter what the file name is, paste this in. And then we only want to keep the um, base64 encoded messages here. So we want to delete everything up to the equal sign. So let's do that for every line. Go back here. And then there's a little bits at the end as well um, that we want to delete. So let's do that. Delete this. Uh, let's go back there. Delete that as well. Delete here. And then delete this part. Let's copy all of this. Let's go to burp. Go to the coder. Paste that in. And then we want to decode this as uh, base64. And we can see our chat messages here. Hello, how can I help? I forgot my password. No problem, Carlos. It's, and this is the password. So let's go to our lab. Let's close this. Let's go to my account. Username was Carlos. Password, let's paste it in and log in. And there we go. We've successfully solved the lab. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.